I think of a world without music I think of a world without art I think of a world without the right-sided mind And the thought if it tears me apart In 1983, Yehudi Menuhin, the founder of Live Music Now, wrote the children's story, The King, the Cat and the Fiddle. The story tells of an almost bankrupt king whose accountants recommend he sacks his musicians to save money. When the music in the land stops, however, all the kingdom enters a deep depression and the king's cat takes it upon himself to teach people the fiddle restoring music and happiness to the land. The arts in general terms are still seen as a luxury or more often just mere entertainment, remaining bottom of the list of most people's lists and continually fighting for funding and recognition as a result, despite the huge 10.8 billion pounds they contribute to the economy and the growing evidence for the enormous impact of arts and health in the UK. Since the worldwide pandemic broke out, one would hope that this perception has changed. For during lockdown, the places that people turned to for their own sanity and coping mechanisms were the arts. Drama via TV and Netflix, literary escapism through many a good book, music via online streaming services, radio or CDs, or even arts and crafts got a boost as parents brought up paints, pencils and creative packs to keep children entertained alongside homeschooling. It's even more painful then that the performing arts in particular are one of the sectors hardest hit by COVID-19 in 2020, with very little light at the end of the tunnel. A sector which gives way beyond its community and education work. Creators immediately adapted their delivery during lockdown, continuing to reach audiences through live streaming concerts, pre-recorded theatre shows, Zoom music lessons and more. While some of these options allowed them the opportunity to continue to earn a little within the world's newfound restrictions, for many it was about maintaining connection, continuing to give generously to those for whom these regular creative outputs provided much needed respite at a time when everyone's mental health was taking a battering. Mental health within the music industry has been a growing issue even before COVID-19 reached our shores. Mental health, just like physical health, is an everyone issue. So how does this apply to musicians in general, and even more so in a time of COVID? The image of the rock and roll music star enjoying a hedonistic mix of sex, drugs and alcohol is one long accepted, and one that has claimed far too many talented people. From those who died far too young in what is known as the 27 Club, such as Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse, to more recent talents lost through mental health struggles, such as the DJ Avicii, Chris Cornell of Soundgarden, Linkin Park frontman Chester Bennington, and Frightened Rabbit Scott Hutchinson. The industry is finally waking up to the urgent need to support musicians, because whilst music itself is an extremely therapeutic tool and beneficial to mental, emotional, and physical health, ironically, the life of a professional musician contains many of the ingredients for high risk for poor mental health. Musician Frank Turner has held multiple online fundraising concerts for independent venues and his own crew and bandmates during the lockdown. Here's what he has to say about the situation. Hi there, Frank Turner here talking about mental health in the music industry. Um, it's a topic that has been much more discussed in recent years, which is something I'm actually pretty pleased about. Things have definitely changed in terms of opening up the conversation in my time in the music industry the last 20 years or so. So um, it's good to see people talking about it. Um, it's a difficult thing, firstly, because there's a bit of a chicken and egg thing about um, songwriting and mental health. You know, do people who are have mental health issues write better songs or, you know, is there some connection there between creativity and seeing the world from a slightly skewed angle, the, the old Leonard Cohen line about um, uh, there's a crack in everything and that's how the light gets in. Um, so, you know, often when you're talking about artists, you're dealing with people who tend perhaps slightly more than the average population to have issues with mental health. You then throw on top of that the fact that the way that most artists live in normal times is really strange. You know, we're talking about people who live um, in tour buses, very high pressure lives with sort of bad food, 
endless alcohol on tap. You know, I've lived most of my adult life in a situation whereby um, if I run out of alcohol that's been provided for free, people will go and get me more. And that can be pretty difficult for people who have issues with um, substance abuse. And of course, other temptations are available on the road as well if you want them. There's high pressure from record labels to succeed, to play shows, to not sleep very much, to, to work really, really hard. And all of that can add up to some pretty serious issues. Um, uh, so, you know, it's it's it can be a, a minefield for artists generally, mental health at the best of times. Lockdown has been very difficult um, because uh, certainly from the point of view of being a performing artist, what happened in March is somebody found the on switch for my career and and, and switched it. And, um, you know, I, I was in the middle of a tour in March and I had to stop and come home. And that really felt like I'd lost my identity to a degree because touring and playing live is what I do. It's also how I pay my rent. Um, and that's a whole other issue unto itself. But the identity issue was really quite um, powerful for me. And, um, you know, then of course you throw in the fact that lockdown provides obstacles for mental health for everybody and anybody from all walks of life because it was a scary time and people were isolating. Um, some people, anyone who was isolating on their own, that's a terribly difficult situation to be in. And I think also there was a bit of a kind of expectation that, um, you know, uh, oh, um, uh, now you've got time to write, which in a way became kind of slightly pressured as well, you know, because the, the idea that there were no distractions during lockdown was ridiculous because there was one enormous distraction, which was the global pandemic. So it's been a rough time. Um, it's wonderful to see that there are groups out there who are providing sort of support and helplines for mental health stuff and indeed uh, things like um, the Save Our Venues campaign, the We Make Events campaign and that kind of thing to try and sort of keep the embers of the music industry burning whilst it's in this kind of state of pause currently. Um, I'm hoping that things like extensions to follow schemes can come together. That would certainly help a lot um, and indeed uh, more funding for uh, mental health facilities generally in the population. It's very important to say that first, but for us as well, it would be a welcome thing. Um, but first and foremost, it's a good thing as compared to when I started out that we're even able to have these conversations out loud. So as Frank says, people are starting to wake up to the challenges for musicians, even pre-COVID, and it's good to talk. Help Musicians UK and Music Support both offer free helplines for musicians struggling with their mental health. And music industry therapists and coaches offer bespoke sessions from industry experienced professionals. But despite this, it is still hard for people to admit that they are struggling and get the help they need. For a freelance musician, image is everything. And there is a fear that comes along with admitting a vulnerability that it may affect your career and future work opportunities, particularly within less rock and roll genres, such as classical music. The six important keys to maintaining positive mental health are social connection, staying active, managing stress, a healthy diet, quality sleep, and meaning and purpose. It is all those areas that are affected by the natural life of a freelance musician. Drugs and alcohol, even if more the domain of nightclubs than concert halls, can still be used as a means of survival across all musical genres, and both can make mental health struggles worse. If anything, the pandemic has reversed that situation. While musicians have been unable to work, they have benefited from less time on the road, meaning more time at home, the ability to eat and sleep better and build on family relationships. Their mental health should have improved, shouldn't it? The pandemic's affected everyone differently. I'm quite lucky in the sense that I'm not a full-time musician, so I've been able to work from home and support myself financially, which I know is not the story for everyone. Um, but as a musician, you know, I've not been able to play shows, um, well, to people's faces at least, um, and I don't intend on doing so until it's absolutely safe to, and you know, I'm not putting anyone at risk, that's just for my own conscience. But yeah, as, as a musician, I've been able to lock myself up in this little studio room here at home, work on new music, I've put a few things out the last few months, um, I know that a lot of people have been doing that, and I think the last few months have taught us anything, that, you know, that need for connection is stronger now than ever. And I think we all connect through music. If you look at the online shows, for instance, the interaction going on in the comments, people have that real, that there, there is community there. Um, and maybe that community is stronger now more than ever. And hopefully that will follow through to, to the after times. Yeah, hopefully that will be sooner rather than later though. The pandemic pushed the whole world into an anxious bubble of social isolation, with dramatic changes to life affecting some more than others. The fact that the way forward still remains unknown 
especially for those within the performing arts, means this anxiety has not dissipated simply because some lockdown restrictions have lifted. The situation continues to change worldwide every day, which brings with it much uncertainty about the future. The music and theatre industries have been one of the hardest hit sectors. Stress and anxiety has increased with growing financial concerns, with what looks like a full year of inactivity presenting itself. The lack of recognition for their contribution to the economy and society and concern for their well-being from the government is really making people feel undervalued. Careers have been put on hold, isolation has grown, identities are being questioned and creativity has been stifled. The entire landscape of the music industry in the UK is being changed. The Musicians' Union recently reported a third of musicians may quit the industry due to COVID-19. 47% have been forced to look for work outside of music. 88% do not think that the government has done enough to support musicians. One third have been unable to access any of the government's emergency funding. And 87% of those who benefited from financial support to date will face severe hardship this October. Ironically, those whose skills and talents are often used to improve the well-being of vulnerable groups within our communities are becoming a vulnerable group themselves and they need our help urgently. Clarinetist Daisy Evans has been part of the Live Music Now scheme in Wales for the past four years. She is both aware and active in ensuring she has the tools to help maintain her mental health as a musician. Hello. Before the announcement of the UK lockdown on March the 23rd, live music performance made a large proportion of my freelance work. Within the space of a week, all of my live music work was wiped from my diary for the foreseeable future. Reflecting upon this, it was an uncertain period where the structures and foundations of what I had created as my career were destabilised. For a few days, it was challenging to focus as the long-term musical vision that had guided my actions and choices for so long had disappeared almost overnight. I felt an immense sense of loss while thinking of the memories of the past and projecting ideas of what could have been into the future. I felt a sense of discomfort in the space I was inhabiting and at some points a lack of control with the open-ended nature of what was happening. I spent a few days searching through research articles. One concept that really allowed me to make sense of my experience and view it through multiple lenses was the idea of grief. The more I explored the area of grief, I became acutely aware of the power in finding meaning in the chaos and letting go of what I cannot control. Furthermore, I also became mindful of the idea of collective grief. The world was experiencing grief together and considering this made me feel less isolated in my personal situation. I believe mental and physical health are interlinked and even pre-COVID, I was an advocate for raising awareness of the importance of them, especially within the arts sector. During COVID, for me, it has been even more imperative to channel my energy into maintaining and exploring these areas on a deeper level. Initially, I devised three key words to help me focus. Rebuilding my structures from the foundations was an important step in regaining my focus. I continued practicing daily yoga and mindfulness and expanded this to new anchor habits, such as tracking small things, like how much water I was drinking every day and scheduling in specific times to clean and declutter my environment. Without the extrinsic motivation of gigs, for me, it has been important to notice my relationship with practice. And I have done this through creating various practice trackers. I signed up for various courses, including an online mindfulness for creative practice course through the Guildhall School of Music and online webinars on musical areas I am interested in. I wanted to keep my musical inspiration alive despite the very real lack of creative performance work. As musicians, our personal and professional boundaries can become blurred. Our identities can often become being a musician and for many, the lack of creative outlets during COVID has very quickly stripped away layers of identity. This can become a very isolating experience. I was aware of identifying my support networks early on and creating my own positive bubble of influence with people I could share my feelings and thoughts with. 
Alongside this, I have kept in contact with my mentor to talk through various experiences and I have also started training to be a coach and a mentor through Guildhall, which has opened up a whole new network of positive influence. So the COVID effect on musicians is not just about money, although that is a big part. There is also a whole loss of identity that people are questioning. And without a secure anchor, it's getting harder and harder to weather this storm. So what can be done to support the mental health of musicians at this time especially? Hi, I'm Bethan Alvin from Horizons Music Project and from BBC Radio Wales. I'm a DJ that plays new music every Saturday night. I just wanted to mention three things that have helped me this year. In a year of chaos, uncertainty, financial stress, things being cancelled, bombardment of world news and just the trauma of it all. I think the first thing is with the online community, be kind, check in on people. If people have gone quiet, there's usually a reason for it. Um, and I've really appreciated kind messages from people, some people I hardly know this year, who have been talking about our various personal struggles. So the online community is an amazing thing and just try and affirm other people's situations by being as kind as possible, sharing people's new releases, sharing their music. I think it's certainly a good place to start. It makes you feel good about what you're doing as well. So it kind of builds a community around you. The second thing is the opposite of the online community is to turn the phone off. Sometimes it's been like super noisy and stressful and chaotic to just wake up in the morning and just scrolling social media and just the amount of platforms that we are consumed by these days from LinkedIn to TikTok. I think it's not that simple and so the addiction of it is definitely real and I've certainly felt it. So the third thing is uh, well-being, our mental health well-being is certainly connected to how we feel and how we keep well in other areas of our lives. So, you know, my sleep has been horrendous this year and I think it's just making sure that we kind of chill out from any um, bombardment of, of messages and things just before trying to get to sleep so exercise you know diet all those really simple things that all in all add to our sense of well-being so building a kind community switching off from the phone and keeping ourselves physically as healthy as possible helps our mental well-being. So those are the th three things I've kind of really lent upon this year in a really, really difficult and absolutely crazy year. In practical terms, check in on any musicians you know on a regular basis. Offer a safe place to talk if they need it. Maybe take them for a socially distanced cuppa or beer. If appropriate, share with them the mental health support resources on the Musicians' Union website in case they don't already know what's available. Buy their music and merch if they have any. It is currently one of the main income options. Bandcamp have offered free fee periods to encourage merch buying from artists who use their website during lockdown. Stream as much of their music as you can on online platforms and add their songs to playlists. It isn't big bucks, but if enough people do it, it can add up eventually. Tell your friends about their music and encourage them to support them too. If they are live streaming concerts, then watch and donate if you can. Again, this is one of a few current income options available to them. Write encouraging messages on their social media pages to remind them of how much they are valued and missed. They really need to know their skills matter at present. If you know them personally, then send them a private message of encouragement. If a musician you know or follow disappears off social media for a bit or goes silent, don't demand their attention. They are looking after their health, and at the moment, many aren't in a place to give. Lower your expectations. Musicians need to connect together at this time, to fuel their creativity, to share experiences, and to remember they're not alone. If you are a musician, then reach out to others you know and support each other. Organisations who employ musicians should look at what wellbeing support they offer and make sure options are in place going forward. Join the MU and ISM campaigns to get more financial support to freelance musicians during this time and find safe ways to reopen venues for performances. Write to your local MP 
and express your concerns. The world needs music and we need to look after our musicians now more than ever because it is they, along with the NHS, who look after us. The song that keeps going through my head whenever I think about this is this one. So I say thank you for the music, songs of singing, thanks for all the joy they're bringing. Who can live without it? I ask in all honesty, what would life be without a song or a dance? What are we? So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. It feels like a penitentiary and it's given me perspective because it's been a while since we were together in all the same places. And I miss your smiles And I miss your actual faces Forget shaking your hand I'm gonna hug you like a friend And never use the internet again